Hello, this is Angela with Parker's per Permaculture, and this is Athena. Okay, um, I am obviously not filming for my garden today. Please forgive the messy bedroom, the wet hair, the lack of makeup, the needy dog. Um, so I'm not gonna lie, um, it's been a rough couple of days. I got back from Atlanta around 2.30 in the morning on Tuesday, and oh, hi girl. Okay, I got back from Atlanta around 2.30 in the morning on Tuesday. Okay. And I've had a little bit of a rough go of it since then. I got food poisoning um, and have been sick as a dog for uh, two days, basically. So, you know, words the wise, if you are traveling, avoid eating salads or fruit. Anything that is uncooked, uh, raw veggies is a, a high risk for food poisoning. But restaurant we were at, like a deli we were at, had such good looking salads. And it was right before we flew out. And I thought to myself, like, okay, this will be fine. This will be fine. And... I could hear my dad, my dad was, um, he had a master of public health as well as being a physician and he worked in like county public health for a lot of his career, um, adjacent to his military career. And he would always tell me like, if you're gonna get food poisoning while you are on a trip, it's gonna be the salad or it's gonna be melon. It's gonna be, if you avoid, if you avoid undercooked or raw seafood, the ways that you're gonna get sick are raw fruits and veggies. And yeah, okay. So, so that's why I'm here, like not bothering to do anything. Look at, I'm in my jammy pants still. But I wanna to talk today about a permaculture concept and it's actually something useful for, for kind of any intentional, um, sustainable, organic. I'll adjust my camera here a little bit because my dog keeps trying to knock it over. I hope you can't hear Athena. She's got a little bit of grumbly tummy. Um, fix this. Okay, so I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep fiddling with my wet hair. Okay, so I hope that you can't hear Athena. She's got a bit of grumbly tummy in the background, but she has missed me. So she is kind of a, a bit of a Velcro dog. And, and and also so is Martha, who who is here as well. So, okay. Um, when we're looking at ways that we can use the permaculture principle of design from patterns to details, when we are looking at what nature can teach us in terms of you know, successful techniques for the garden. We often have to look at those elements that can be of a benefit to our garden ecosystem, but are not something that we traditionally use in more formal, um, you know, very geometric garden planning. Because they may be a little sloppy, they may be a little messy looking, because they may show the whole process of life in the garden. Right, I think a lot of very Western notions of beautiful gardens, of garden design, um, have, have historically emphasized plants when they are at their best, when they're at their peak. And having that succession of plants that you put in, you chop them down when they're, they've gone over and the bloom is over, hoping to get a repeat round of blooms. You wanna make sure you stack plants in your border so that you have a continuous succession of blooms. And I talk about that a lot in my garden. I want things flowering all the time. I want a succession of fruit harvests as well so that there's constantly something that is getting me out into the garden, right? However, you know, and I've talked about this in a number of videos, there is such a beauty and an importance to understanding the full life cycle of a plant in the garden and understanding that senescence is just as important as kind of peak productivity. And it has a role in the garden ecosystem. So a little while ago, my husband and I went on a trip to the Oregon garden and I noticed there were a number of places in the garden that they used a design element that I also use in my permaculture garden which is how do you utilize dead and decaying wood in the garden? And how does that enhance not only the fertility of the garden, but also the success of a number of plants, right? Um, when we're out in nature, it's very, very obvious here in the Pacific Northwest, if you go hiking anywhere in the woods, like you go to the Tillamook Forest or you go to Gifford Pinchot or any of those places, you'll see dead and dying logs. You'll see these nurse logs. You'll see a lot of stumps where the forestry service came in and cut down the old growth or second growth forest. And out of those stumps will be growing, in particular, huckleberries, a number of other things, but definitely huckleberries, red huckleberries and evergreen huckleberries. They do so much better when they have a nurse log. They have evolved to grow basically in or you know directly adjacent to decaying wood. And there are so many plants in our garden that benefit from their proximity to dead and decaying wood, even though it doesn't look really pretty and we're like, oh, it's full of bugs. And the wood's often full of grubs and it doesn't look very pretty. 
it serves a really important purpose on, on a number of levels, right? That spongy wood acts as a literal sponge. So I've talked before, I have, I'm pointing out my bedroom window here. I have red huckleberries on this side of the garden in the shade garden. And when I planted them years and years ago, Bosque Dell Natives Nursery said, I recommend that you plant, we recommend that you plant your red huckleberry with a large chunk of really punky rotten wood and you will have much better success because the rotten wood absorbs all that moisture, acts as a sponge and slowly releases it. And also as the wood decays, you get nitrogen released into the soil and a number of other important minerals for the plant. And these plants have evolved to grow in proximity to dead and decaying wood. That is the environment that they like best. And I have found that's really successful, but it's true for a number of other plants as well. Let me, let me cut in a little bit here from our trip that might help better illustrate that. So worth noting here, you have a nurse stump and I have a lot of videos and I talk frequently about the importance of dead and dying trees in your garden ecosystem, in your permaculture landscape, how they provide habitat for insects, amphibians, for reptiles, but also how they provide habitat for young plants. Loads and loads of plants benefit from the nitrogen release of rotting wood, but also the spongy quality of rotting wood that holds moisture in an area. I know if you want to grow red huckleberries in your garden, they often in the wild are coming out of a dead stump. They prefer to grow on or directly adjacent to a big old rotting piece of wood. And so when I grow red huckleberries in my garden, I plant a large chunk of spongy rotting wood in the ground directly next to where I put my red huckleberries and that helps them get the kind of environment that they need in order to be successful. So if you have to remove a tree, consider all of the reasons that it is good to leave the stump and how that creates habitat, how it increases fungal growth in the soil. I'm looking down because there is a bee on me. Um, hang on a second. Oh, she flew away. Okay, how it increases, you know, habitat and food for fungi in the soil, how it creates habitat for all kinds of plants and for uh, fauna as well. So I hope that was I hope that was helpful. I think there is a way that we can look at how do we harness every part of a plant's life in the garden because mother nature does that. And how do we learn to see the beauty in things that are dead and decaying, in things that are on the way out instead of feeling this kind of pathological need for tidiness that western gardens often have. So how do we say I don't need to use synthetic fertilizers? Maybe I don't need to use fertilizers at all if I'm not constantly clearing away my dead leaf litter. If I'm using chop and drop if I'm letting the organic material stay inside my closed system and letting it be a benefit to the plants in my system, much like it would happen in the wild. What does that give us? It gives us parts of the garden that may not look tidy. It gives us parts of the garden that may not fit the typical, especially like American suburban or like formal English garden style. It may look unkempt. It may look messy. It may say like we have to acknowledge that death and dying is part of the garden, is part of our lives, is part of reality. Um, and so I think there is an, an element there of understanding the importance that decaying material brings to the garden, like physically, right? That, that the cycling in the garden is crucial for the health and the vigor of our garden ecosystem. I also think there's kind of like a philosophical element there too that says, if I have to be confronted with things in the garden that don't just represent youth and vigor and productivity and fertility, but I also, well, I mean, decaying things do represent fertility, but not how we think, right? If I have to look at things that are not just green and lush or beautiful and blossoming, if I have to look at things in their natural state of decline and see what happens to them after death, does that mean that I am then facing my own mortality? And what does that mean if I am trying to hide those elements from my garden? Um, and what benefit can it bring to me to face every part of the garden life cycle. And what does it mean to say, I'm going to not only face, but honor every part of the life cycle in my garden and in my life. So um, I hope that was helpful. I hope to be back in the garden soon. Um, hopefully I won't be going to the doctor later today. Um, it's been it's been a real rough go, y'all. So please don't forget to click like and subscribe. That is a wonderful way that you can support the work of this channel. I also have a Venmo if you and a PayPal. If you're like Angela, I appreciate the work that you do. There's also a thanks button here 
on YouTube that you can say like, I'm just gonna tip you a little bit. I appreciate the work that you do and um, I wanna say thanks. So that's really important and meaningful for me. That helps me keep a roof over our family's head and like buy groceries. So um, it's, yeah. Um, okay, thanks again. I'll be back really soon, hopefully from the garden.